so hello friends welcome back to the channel today in this video i'm going to review the ancient os version 7.1 for realme 6785 devices that includes realme 6 6i g90 realme 7 narzo 20 pro and narzo 30 4g so in the change log you can see this ROM comes with February security patch and the realme direct and realme parts are removed because of stability issue and in this ROM we get the carrier aggregation but it will not show the 4G plus but still the carrier aggregation will work and some improvement in auto brightness and brightness slider etc then the weak vibration is fixed and enabled AUX camera support for aperture camera app so these are the change logs and you can see the screenshots from here and this rom is built by flynn so let's get to the review so the hands-on experience of this rom is really good it's really smooth the overall experience is impressive so in the quick setting panel you can see it looks like typical android 12 quick setting panel and you get these tiles if you go to edit you can see animations in each of the tiles I hope you noticed and you get individual Wi-Fi and mobile data tile then we have the scan QR code 100 mode auto brightness button the caffeine the compass preferred network I think that is the button to change data for sim card then we have the smart fixtures which is not that useful for LCD displays then we have the USB tethering like you can turn on the USB tethering by a single button you don't need to go to the settings all the time then we have the vpn tethering i don't know what is this then we have the nearby share live transcript etc and if i hold here in the wallpaper and style we get these settings there is limited options like themed icons and app grid in the basic color you can choose the color accent in change wallpaper we get only on device wallpapers and my photos in the widget we get all the widgets and in home screen we get the pixel launcher and in icons we get some customization in the home screen we have some options like wallpaper scrolling wallpaper zooming etc swipe to access google app and we get hot seat background so if i restart the system ui you can see we are getting a hot seat background if i show you clearly so you can add the lens in the recent style you can see currently we have two buttons and here if you see clearly we have the ram usage and in this rom the ram usage is little bit more than other roms or it may be about the accuracy because it is only showing 1.1 gb free and if i run some more apps then the ram will be around 800 mb free and we can just add the google lens here and it will look like this and we have three options in the show memory info so when the value is zero it shows like this 2.2 gb and the ram which is 4 gb then if i change it to value one it will show like this let me show you closely and when i change it to value two it will look like this here is a circle then if i change it to three it shows like this if i change it to four it will look like this in the miscellaneous we have use taskbar for opening and switching app anywhere then we have hidden and protected apps so this is kind of app lock you can say you can add any app in this list now in the about section we have the list of the contributors in this rom and we have the ancient os icon and the version now let's get to the settings so in the about phone if i go to android version you can see this is ancient os version 7.1 texas cake the maintainer is zidane the build type is still the android version is android 13 the security patch update is of 5 february the kernel is your for your kernel and the Selenux is actually enforcing but i am using the viper and i flashed it with magisk here you can see in the modules i have the viper so this module changes the Selenux status to permissive if you have enforcing Selenux. so yes this rom comes with enforcing Selenux. now in the network and internet we don't have button for each of the dns now talking about the battery backup of this rom if you use this continuously you will get around six to seven hours of battery backup and the screen on time is around six hours if you use continuously then we get the battery optimization the sleep mode the battery temperature so the surrounding temperature is around 35 degree that's why the battery temperature is currently higher then we have the battery saver here so i was using it 
continuously for several hours so it is showing the apps which consumed the battery the most and in the display we have screen timeout and lock screen timeout so the lock screen timeout is the timeout of the lock screen and the screen timeout is normal which is the display timeout then we have the minimum refresh rate and maximum refresh rate both can go to 45 hertz here we get the display cutout which i don't use personally we have the pocket detection and prevent accidental wake up now in sound and vibration we have the increasing ring volume which is like real by the ringtone volume will gradually increase then we have the power app volume control this is it for the sound and vibration now in security we get the app lock then face and fingerprint unlock talking about the speed it's normal so let me show you the speed so this is the face unlock speed talking about the fingerprint speed you can see so i have turned off the ripple effect that is why it is fast in the notification we have bubble sensitive notification skip lock screen etc now finally let's get to the customization so in crafted with heart we get all the customization and we can also change the ui and here we get lots of customization like in add-on you get the ancient ui switch which is so big clock in qs panel so normally you will notice the qs panel looks like this but when i turn it on it will look like this which is the typical ancient os quick setting panel and you can even change it here we get the gradient clock which will look like this here you can see this side of the clock is blue and this side is black that is why it's called gradient then we have the yapoon style which looks like this then we have the os 13 which looks like this the sim fact this one is not working properly i mean it's not aligned so let's keep this to default then we have the ancient ui clock gravity the os 13 clock style and we have the status bar style if i change it to ios kw it looks like this if we change it to ipong it looks like this then we can even set status bar height style now in status bar we get the logo yes like other customizable roms we get the logo here we can choose any of these icons you can see here we also get a battery bar which works like this you can see here we have got a bar then we have the network traffic indicator which works perfectly fine i got no issue then we have the transparent status bar clock i hope you can see the difference then we have the battery status style the battery percentage etc in the themes we have got the dark theme and in the dark theme we have pure black then we have these settings you can see card view and cn settings theme about phone style etc the ui style so you can see the ui changed then we have the icon pack data icon style status bar icon style yes you can change all the icons we we get a lot of icon styles and we have the theming setting here you can turn on tint background the theme style is here in the quick setting we have the brightness control let me show you what is this when i turn it on you can change the brightness by sliding across the status bar then we have some more settings like quick qs pull down so data usage the battery estimates the gradient color picker etc in the buttons we have toggle flashlight when screen is off the volume steps the volume percentage click to partial screenshot etc in the power menu we have the restart and advanced reboot option and in advanced reboot tile we get advanced and direct restart button now in advanced we have system ui recovery and bootloader we can turn on the settings in the power menu when i turn it on you can directly go to settings by this button in the gestures we have aosp gestures the three finger gestures and if you use this three finger gesture you may get touch issues it's preferable to keep it turned off then we have the haptic feedback the hide ime button space which actually works you can see the button space is too small then we have the advanced gesture options in advanced gesture option we have extend swipe action like real miui if we just long left swipe then it will turn on the camera so you can see when i long right swipe the flashlight turns on and when i long left swipe it should open the camera but i think it's not working in the navigation bar we have pulse navigation style and we get lots of navigation style so if you use navigation bar 
then this ROM is heaven for you. In layout, we have compact, left leaning, right leaning, etc. Now in lock screen, we have ANSI lock screen clock style. So here, if I choose the scapula, let me show you the default one first. So the default one looks like this. If I change it to scapula, it will look like this. Then if I change it to sternum, it will look like this. It's completely black. That's why it's not that visible. And we can even change it to gradient. But in gradient, we have to customize the color from here. Then we get option to hide the status bar in lock screen. So you can see the status bar is visible. Now if I turn it on, the status bar is not visible now. In the notification, we get colored icons, notification count, noisy notification, etc. We get some other options like show on AOD which means always on display and yes in this ROM we get the always on display which is not that useful but we get this option you can see then we get the light color we can choose custom color then we have the light layout style etc in animation we get the screen of animation currently I have set this to CRT that's why when the screen is turning off it's looking like CRT then we have animation style animation duration etc in the battery we get smart pixels when we enable the smart pixel you can see the screen is pixelized but this is not as useful because we have lcd display so in the devices like redmi note 10 pro etc where we get the amoled display this option will be really helpful it will save a lot of battery and here you can see we have the burn in protection which is also a good option for oled displays then we have the block sensors which blocks the sensor while it is on idle so these options are really helpful for saving the battery then in miscellaneous we get the three options unlock higher fps in games unlimited google photo storage and netflix proof and with these we have parallel space wallpaper zoom effect wake on plug etc and we get an option of usb configuration from here you can choose to file transfer usb tethering etc now in about we get the about of ncn2s so this is all about the settings ui of ncn2s now talking about the performance i have made the cpu throttling test and the result was like this although i did not use any script or performance mode by default the performance was like this and in the high performance score you can see the performance was really fluctuating but in low performance score we get stable performance and the graph is like this i have run it for seven minutes and the cpu throttled 88 percent of its max performance but you can stabilize this by using performance script the graph will be just like a straight line if you use a script and this rom is stable enough i think as per my usage now talking about the bluetooth the bluetooth is working perfectly fine you can see i have connected a bluetooth neckband and this is working fine now talking about the ram management the ram management is really good although the free ram is really less but the ram usage is pretty good you can see i have opened magisk a long time ago but still it is in the background even if i open the easter egg you can see it is still in the ram then if i open the viper it's still in the ram so you can see the ram management is really good until you keep two games like bgmi or call bgmi and call of duty simultaneously although i have the 4gb ram variant considering 4gb ram the ram management was really good with my experience i can say if you have 6gb ram then ram management will be better than this so don't worry now talking about bugs i did not found any major bugs but sometimes when i use this phone then if i just normally use it it automatically crashes i mean the system ui reboots automatically and one thing i forgot to talk about it is the game space so in game space we get this game space and here we get blocks full screen event stay awake lock screen lock gesture disable auto brightness disable swipe to screenshot and usb debugging so these all options are really helpful if you are a gamer and in each of the application that is added in this list you get the graphics option and the performance options like you can set to standard performance or battery now talking about the charging issue i did not found any charging issue 
even in all of the roms that i tried until today i did not found any charging issue in any of the rom but still i want to show you the charging speed because some of my subscriber requested me to do that so here you can see when i plug in the cable so in the lock screen you can see it shows book charging and the current ampere currently it is on 2.4 ampere because i have 20 watt charging and this is pretty accurate but still the voltage is not showing although you should not fully trust on this text because this is sometimes wrong but in this rom it is almost working fine so let's get to the gaming test and the surrounding temperature is really high you can see the battery temperature is already 41 few seconds ago it was on 42 so i will just end the test quickly by playing matches into all the games and i am doing this video recording in the gaming test because in screen record the frame rate were varying i mean when i used scr cpi for screen recording the frame rate was capped up to 60 in the bgmi but when i play without any screen capture it was around 90 so that's why i am interested to do the gaming test without any screen capture so let's start with bgmi i have added the games in the game space so i am using the cape mark for fps because the game space fps floats right here or here so when when i use my fingers the fps hides so that's why i'm using it and let me show you first that the new state is crashing So you can see while optimizing the game it automatically crashed. So now let's play BGMI. In the BGMI I did not get any crashing issue so that's a good news. So currently I am not using any script so let's play an arena match first and the frame rate is set to 90 fps so you will see the real time performance of this rom. So you can see it is set to 90 fps. So there is a lot of frame drops you can see it's around 35 to 42 not more than that So I hope you got the idea of performance in the TDM. So let's leave and test the battle royale. And friends, after playing a single match, if I show you the temperature, it's 43 degree. You can see. So let's jump into boot camp. And I don't think without script it will give more than 40. But in the FPS, you can set. You can see it is set to. 90 now let's jump and i hope you are tracking the current fps So the FPS is really bad, it's around 30.
so you can see without the script it does not go more than 45 maximum 48 and for a second it went up to 50 let's try the performance script for a second because I don't want for a long time because the surrounding temperature is really high so you can see as soon as I switched I just flashed the performance script it went to 84 86 around 90 so you can easily get 90 fps if your surrounding temperature is cool So I will just close the match and use the balance script and now let's test the call of duty. In call of duty we don't need any script, without script we easily get 60 fps, even 70. But still I will show you a match and here in the call of duty you can see the graphics is set to max and if I choose ultra then start a match. and. I want to remember you that the balance script it, the balance script is active so I am not using the performance script currently because I will show you the real time performance So you can see I am not using any script but still it is giving around 80 fps. So this is the performance of Call of Duty without any script. So friends this is it for this video. I hope you liked this video. I have tried a new ROM which is ancient OS. So if you liked this video make sure to do subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss the updates. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.